Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Obsidian Pop-Out Windows, which is the new feature, and I think it was 15.4. Now, to get this, if you don't see some of the commands here, you will actually need to download the installer again. Um, this happens just sometimes. You'll need to download the installer and uh, just copy it over top. That's it. Just reinstall the application. So let's dig into what Pop-Out Windows are. So I often use this when I'm working on a writing project, and I'll show you that um, when I need you know, my dual monitor set up here, uh, and I'll show you actually how it works on the monitors in a second, um, to open up the area, the note I want to write in, and then open up research on my second monitor. Uh, because I guess I could, you know, stretch Obsidian across two monitors, but that always just feels janky and sometimes leaves stuff in the middle of the monitor, not what I'm looking for. So to do this, there are really four ways, I say two, four ways to open up uh, the command and we'll show it to you here. So let's just minimize my current window a little bit. And our first way is going to be going up to the three dot menu, we'll hit more and we're going to say move to new window. And this actually opened up the current file I had in a new window. Now, one thing you notice here is that this is not necessarily a full copy of Obsidian. I can do some stuff in here. I can do like a split screen. I could uh, do a few other commands, but there are some things I don't have. So I hit the command palette. I don't have the sidebar. I can't toggle the sidebar at all. So it's not quite uh, a full copy of Obsidian. The other way we can access this is from the command palette. This might actually be the better one. It's the one I use uh, so I can keep my hands on the keyboard. Here I'm going to hit Command P, Control P if you are on Windows, and I'm going to go New Window. It gives me both options. So I can move to current window, which is what we did with our previous command, or we can say Open in New Window. So now I actually have two copies of the same file. I have the original one I was working in, and I have a new copy of it here. You notice my theme is different. Uh, I believe that's because I changed a the theme in the middle of re just before recorded, and so it's not picking up the new theme in the new pane. So that should not happen to you. You should just stick with your normal theme. So next up, you can also click links to do this. So I'm going to two finger click here. You can also you probably use right click on Windows, and again I can open in new pane or open in new window. So I'm opening my new file. This is my writing Kanban board in a new window. And then finally, if we split vertically and we open a new file, we also can, you can drag and drop things to like rearrange the panes like that. But I can also just drag out to a blank area and get a new window like that. So those are the four ways that you can access the new window commands in Obsidian. Now, let's talk about how I use this. So I often end up working on my right hand screen here, which is just under my camera um, for writing. And if I want to do more research, then I would um, open that in my, or I'd want to write on this side and do my research on the other side. You can actually see, I'll flip to my secondary display right now, my secondary screen, you can see I actually have um, uh, not Devin, Think, Devin Think open in my left-hand screen. And so I'd actually, for this type of research for that, I would actually be reading Devin Think here and taking notes on this side. So now let's talk about how I use this in my writing projects. So right now I have uh, in my community project, which I really haven't had a ton of opportunity to work on. Um, I suppose I would say I haven't chosen to use my time that way because you can't make time. I don't make time. It's not a factory. You don't find time. It's not changing the couch. You choose to use your time. That's all you can do. So what I want to do here is I want to um, move or new window, type new window, and I'm going to open current pane in new window because I want a copy of it. So I'm going to take this and move it back to my other side here. So now I have uh, my research over here and I have my writing. So let's just start clicking on some links here. So we can open this in a new pane, open a new pane, done. So this is the idea in community that one of the reasons we don't have community is that we really decide that we want full control of our own time without any impedance from anyone else. And so we don't actually participate in community because that would be an impedance on us. So saying helping our neighbor is an impedance on our day where we can't just go choose to use our time exactly as we want at any moment of the drop of a hat. So and I said, I have a title here, Increased Individuality Means We Don't Bowl, based on a book called Bowling Alone, which I haven't read yet, but is on my shelf back here, which is kind of one of the um, 
canonical books talking about community. So I need to read that. But I want to come in here and I probably want to switch this to more of a summary. So we idolize our time. We idolize our time with no outside constraints. At that time we really find is that which we given to others. So that's kind of my citation there uh, for that. So you have people to spend it with. And so even my sub note here on uh, my screen says, well, I don't love everything Cynthia, who's my wife, wants to do with me. I love spending time with her. My time is often more meaningful because I have, uh, because I've spent it with her. Um, meaningful. I actually wrote a note recently. Um, uh, so I have another thought recently. I think I have another note on it. I'll have to go find that another time where you don't remember your time on a vacation when you just sat and looked at your phone. You remember the time you did things with other people, the... Uh, you know, a ski vacation with my daughter, my youngest daughter, who's six now, and she was said, I was, I'm okay, don't ask me why, and just kept going on this giggling and had everyone laughing about that. We remember that interaction with someone we don't remember, like, hey, I looked at my phone the whole time. I played Minecraft the whole time. That's not, you know, that's not really uh, the thing we remember. And so that's part of the note I would put in here. And this is how I would continue with my notes. I would continue looking at um, you know, fleshing out the outline at this stage in the writing, I would look at um, just doing more and more in here to flesh out what this note is, what it means for me, and then eventually writing it. And that's it. That's how I use pop-out windows. I think it can be really useful. Um, I'll link to a video in the description here uh, of a lady named Nicole and how she used it on a smaller screen to help divide up some stuff. I don't really operate on the smaller screen uh, on with this uh, idea anyways, because it is not supported on iPadOS, which is where I would write on a smaller screen. I don't have a laptop to write on a smaller screen. Um, and there, I'd actually love to see that supported there where I can actually uh, have, in, especially in the new stage manager, which will be coming uh, at some point in iPadOS 16.1 where I could have uh, an external monitor with one window of Obsidian open and then a reference monitor on my iPad with another window of Obsidian open. I'm not sure if we'll ever see that because of just how Obsidian is built, but I would love to see that as an option. Now, the other limitation we have in pop-up windows is that as I already showed you, it's not a full Obsidian window. It is a partial window. You don't have access to some of your sidebars, some of the other advanced functionality, but you can split. So I could start splitting this note out and looking at different things and have two screens with my research open. That could be a good thing. Ultimately, that's it. If you like the video, thumbs up below. If you love it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened, but honestly, turn off your notifications. You don't want them. You should go hang out with your kids, do stuff like that instead, or take notes, read a book. Other ways to support the channel, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership, or take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. If you are on Skillshare, all of my courses are on Skillshare. There are links to them below. Have an excellent day.